Before you get into the real estate market, get clarity, perspective, and the information you need. I've been listening to you and I love your show. Right here with broker owner Dan Jemis, host of the Dan Jemis Real Estate Show. Okay, welcome back to the show with you till one o'clock and back with you every Saturday and Sunday from noon to one here on AM 800. Well, over the last few weeks, as you know, we've been featuring our local municipalities telling you all the exciting stuff that's happening across Windsor and Essex County. We love good news here on the show. And well, we featured Essex so far. We featured Amherstburg. Today we're featuring the town of Leamington and on the phone with us is Mayor Hilda McDonald. Hey, Hilda, how are you? I'm well. How are you? Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, you guys have so many great things happening out in Leamington. It's an exciting time. It's, um, yeah, lots of balls in the air, lots of <laughs> thing, <laughs> things that we're working on, you know, like our waterfront. That's, that's big and exciting. Lots of yeah. uh, plans so going on there. Wh- what's and, happening? Yeah. What's happening with the waterfront? Well, we did a waterfront master plan, and that just was completed last year. I have to, I have to think what time of year it is. It's been such a whirlwind since <laughs> since the election. But we approved our our waterfront uh, water waterfront master plan last year. I think it was the end, and so so now we've got some ideas and some timelines. And I don't know if you've ever come to see our amphitheater. It comes yes, to many times. any concerts. Oh my gosh, it's it's fantastic. But we, we've acquired land. We're still in the process of, of buying up more land. We want to see some plans for restaurants and, and food trucks and things like that going on there so that we can we can build from Seacliff Park with, you know, the destination at the other end, uh, Point Peely. So lots of stuff like that going on. And, you know, some of it is big dollar ticket items, but, sure. you know, it's not the sexy stuff, right? Like we're, we're no, changing... Um, parking lots and things like that. But yeah, that's going to be a, a real destination for a destination place for us. Now, I saw recently in the news uh, a new contract signed with uh, Transit Windsor for a bus service in Leamington. It will continue till, uh, till 2025. Yes, we started that pre-pan- pre-pandemic and it was yeah. a, a pilot project. And it's, it's doing well. You know, I've got a um, Mayor's Youth Advisory Group, Dan, and one of the, the young women stopped me last fall and said if it wasn't for that transit i wouldn't be able to go to to university because my parents can't afford to to have me live there so i can live at home and still go back and forth so so we're really pleased with it city's been great to work with and our and our people are are liking the fact that they don't have to get in their car and drive they can have somebody else do the do the driving you know, it's been so great over the last couple of years as other municipalities, you know, Amherstburg, for example, uh, have, have joined the, the, the transit uh, route as well, which is, which is great. As, as you mentioned, right, a lot of uh, younger folks or some that just can't drive anymore can finally mm-hmm. get to Windsor and, and do some uh, running around there as well, which is great. Yeah, and I, I don't know if you know that we've got an on-demand bus transit system in Leamington where you have an app on your phone and you can book the bus to pick you, come and pick you up at a bus stop near your house. Wow. Yeah, or near where you work. <laughs> that, that's that gone to town much, much more than we ever thought. It's more than doubled the ridership that we had guesstimated it would be. We started that last April. And, yeah, it, it's great. It keeps the bus from running empty. You know, when they, when they do their hour-long route and drive around drive around not a whole lot of people are are taking it you know taking advantage so this like i did it at town hall i booked it to pick me up at 10 o'clock and then i went to one of the schools to do a a talk and then i again put booked it to come and pick me up when i was finished and meanwhile there are a few other people on and they dropped them off and then dropped me off so it was a it was efficient um you're not burning a lot of gas and you're still getting to where you need to go fantastic you know some more announcements i i uh, i saw in the news um bell uh making some big moves out in leamington uh, with pure fiber internet across uh, across the town yep coming in and doing that um on their own you know we're we're helping them make it happen it happened in amherstburg uh, a few yes. years ago and they contacted us and again 
now, you know, post-COVID, people still working from home. They need to have reliable internet. Home businesses, even other businesses that, that rely on internet for, for transactions or communication. So, yeah, we're getting that on the go as well. There's, there's still areas that will need coverage, our, our rural areas, but you know, it's sure. all, it's all part of the big plan. It's but yeah, start. right now we're getting yep. quite a few new places, um, hooked up. I'll tell you, when we uh, had a service here in Amherstburg uh, from uh, fiber service from Bell come in, uh, it was a game changer uh, mm-hmm. across the across the town for the residents there. And we had a lot of clients that were super excited uh, to finally have uh, some decent service. So it's, it's good news all around. Yeah, um, and it's high, high speed, right? So it's yes. not like you're sitting there waiting. Remember back in the day when you... You couldn't oh, yeah. use your phone because you were because <laughs> you were that's dialed up. On. <laughs> oh my gosh! That, and that seems like a, a hundred years ago, but it it wasn't that long ago. I know. Um, you guys have a great uh, market with the Mill Street Market coming back. Uh, starts June 9th, which is great news. Yep, we're really excited about that. I mean, I wish we could do it every weekend or you know six times a year, but. The, but you have to have somebody run it, and we've got our, yes. thank goodness, our Leamington Art uh, Center is running it. They do an awesome job, and, you know, it's people look forward to it. We have several thousand people. Like, I think it was one year it was 4,000 people that were coming. It's a, it's a great night for socialization, you know, sitting, having a drink, having some food, visiting with folks, you know, checking out the, the vendors. It's just a really fun, fun way to spend a Friday night. We love it. Love it. Now, um, I know affordable housing is a big issue uh, that you spoke about during election time as well. It's important to you, Hilda. W- what do you see uh, happening uh, in Leamington? Is there any developments uh, in the works that, that uh, you can share with the audience um, yeah. f- from that standpoint? Yep, absolutely. And and just to, to before I get right into that, I was just at a conference, Ontario Small Urban Municipalities. I just got home yesterday. And and yeah. this is certainly a problem across the, the yes. province. And particularly small urban municipalities because so many folks have moved away from big city centers, right, and are coming yeah. out to smaller smaller towns. And pretty soon your housing stock gets, gets bought up. But in, I'm gonna. I have to think now. What year it was that we bought Leamington High School? It's about 13 acres of property. We just put out a call for proposals about three months ago, and those that's going to be closing shortly. So what what we're envisioning there is a number of styles of homes, uh, maybe some medium rise, some some modular smaller homes, um, some some townhouses. We want to see a, a community there built in that on that property. It's in the in the urban center, with with different levels of housing to accommodate a variety of families. Whether it's single parent families, whether it's retired folks, whether it's young couples starting out, and we're calling it attainable housing, so that hopefully it it'll it won't be the one point four the one point eight million dollar sure. house. This this will be under you know hopefully under three hundred thousand that we can see right. that. Young people, retired people can afford it without a huge cost implications that they can still live, live a quality of life and afford a home because right now that's impossible for lots of young folks starting out. I know a lot of folks are still hoping that we'll see the hundred thousand dollar property come back. We're not going to. Mm-hmm. That that's those mm-hmm. days are gone. So all we can do is the best we can. Like you said, when we saw the average new build, you know, up over a million dollars to get something in that three hundred thousand dollar range, although it's still high for some, it, we have to do the best we can with what we we're given. Right? It's it's only so much you can do. Absolutely, but, but you know we we need and we had a meeting with with some developers a few weeks ago at the Windsor Chamber of Commerce. You know, we were saying profit margins on these projects will will not be what they are on the bigger homes. Right. And, and and we know everyone needs to make a living, but we need to do things like maybe there's no basement or maybe they're just smaller. I mean, you're you're too young to remember this, but when I was in school, wartime houses, a lot of my friends lived in the wartime houses in Leamington. Yep. They just weren't big houses, and, and families were bigger then. We we just have to change, I guess, change our 
idea of what is the perfect home. Sometimes it's not going to be a 2,000 square foot house or a 3,000 square foot house. Maybe it's an 800 square foot house. That's just how yeah. how things have to change to accommodate the economy and people's um, economic ability to uh, to put a roof over their heads. I think as time goes on and affordability keeps being a challenge, it's naturally going to you know, go back that way. It has to because you have to save money somehow and uh, people have to live somewhere. So unfortunately, it's going to it's going to go that way, whether someone likes it or not. Really? Yeah, and you know what? And we have to still make these places attractive, right? And th- and that's right. one reason we want it. We're, we're looking at these requests. Well, we've called through these requests for proposals. We we have an idea in our mind of what we want this community to be. We want it to look really nice. We want it to be quality homes. We want these homes to be then affordable too in regards to utility. So it's the whole it's the whole picture we're wanting. And I'm gonna say other municipalities will be following suit at some point in time as well. And it, it's going to be the new normal. Yep, agreed. Agreed. Fantastic. Anything else you want to mention about uh, the beautiful town of Leamington before we uh, wrap it up? We're very excited about what's ahead. Um, it's you know what we're striving to be an inclusive community to be a place where people not only want to live, shop, work, play, but also stay. That's what we put in our strategic plan. All those other things, but then stay. Young people stay at home, find jobs in tech, greenhouse, ag, in all different kinds of um, lines of work, Leamington and the region, all of it. I love it. Mayor Hilda McDonald with the town of Leamington, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing uh, about what's happening out in Leamington. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks, Dan. Of course. That's, again, Mayor Hilda McDonald with the town of Leamington. Lots of great things happening. And, yeah, affordable housing is an issue that, uh, you know, we're going to continue to to see uh, across uh, the province, not just Windsor-Essex, but everywhere, right? It's uh, it's a big challenge that I wish it didn't uh, had a simple solution. It doesn't. But all we can do is, uh, as the mayor said, just keep working towards it as best as we can and, uh, you know, get to everyone on board, uh, the developers and, uh, and, and everyone else as well. The municipalities can do what they can from their end, from a planning um, standpoint. But at the end of the day, you need developers to actually develop the properties uh, and build them. So we'll see what happens. We're going to come back. We're going to give away a gift card for the Richmond Popcorn Company. If you haven't already, text uh, POPCORN, the keyword is POPCORN with your first and last name to 10800 and we will give that away in a few minutes right here after the break. Okay, lots more to come right here on the Dan Jemis Real Estate Show.